So I'm being lazy today and just holding the camera with my hand. My stand is back here, but I don't want to switch everything around. Over here, if you've been here a while, you've seen these color charts that I've done in the past. And I took down the Zorn palette, which is yellow ochre, cadmium red, black, and then white. But anyway, what I was gonna do originally was I was going to use the paints that I have out here to, to show you how to do color charts. But I'm wondering if we could do the same thing with oil pastel. And I know in theory it should work, but we all know how oil pastels behave. They're not exactly But I thought I would take you along for the ride and let's see how it goes. So let's go over to the top down and let's try this out. I'm just using three colors and white. And the three colors are yellow ochre, cadmium red, black, and then I add white to get the lighter values. And then all the rest of these show what happens when you mix them in different ways. Most of us are familiar with the red, yellow, and blue, and then you add white to it. And in theory, you're supposed to get, when you mix the red and blue, of course, you're supposed to get purple. Yellow and blue, is supposed to get green. If you use a magenta, a cyan, and then a yellow, and these colors are also a way to mix your color wheel. The problem is with any one of these, there's gonna be holes. Some of these are more transparent colors. The ones that are the, the magenta and the cyan and the yellow. These are the subtractive colors. These are what's used in inks, paints, um, printers. These are the colors that you'll find in your ink cartridges, along with the black usually. Whether you use strictly this, this color, this set of colors, or this set of colors, you're gonna wind up with some colors that look a little muddy or they look a little less intense. So you'll need to add something to paint with as full a spectrum as possible. What this is, this is, I'm gonna use this as a color chart. This tape running on here is just some leftover washi tape. You can get it really cheap. I have some that I needed to use up, so that's just what I use. It, ideally, you would use a neutral color on here, um, some painter's tape or something like that, but I really need to use up some of my washi, so I just did that. So what, I'm gonna use oil pastel. So being the organized person that I am, I just use my notes here to do some little swatches to see what would match the cadmium red that I've used on this. And I think, I think the um, Cinelier is going to match. So what I wound up getting, because I pulled out Paul Rubens, Mungio, and then my Cinelier, and forgive me if I'm not pronouncing it right, I, ne I never pronounce it the same way twice, I don't think, in the same video. But what I'm gonna do is I'm going to start mixing these. And this, this is, um, this is yellow ochre. This is just, I believe it's just labeled black, and of course white. Let me check this black too and make sure it's, yeah, I think it'll work. Okay, so what we got here in this square is just straight old yellow ochre and then cadmium red. And forgive me if you can hear the AC, I'm in Kansas um, for anyone who has not been here and Kansas just, it's hot. So this is, this one is supposed to be cadmium red, 
and yellow ochre with the yellow ochre being stronger and this next one is supposed to be the yellow ochre and the cadmium red the cadmium red being the strongest and then this next one is yellow ochre and you can you can do these out as far as you want to I'm just doing a very basic one and then with a the little black and I'm doing this really lightly because the the color tint of the yellow ochre or I'm sorry of the black is going to be so much stronger and this next one is supposed to be black and yellow ochre you can see it just barely, it barely lightens it at all. I'm just using that to kind of blend it a little bit because the, I tried the blender itself and it just didn't. And this is just a yellow ochre, uh, Paul Rubens. The Similier brand tends to be very, very soft and it's, it's warm here. So we see what we can get with it straight. What I'm gonna try and do with the white is I'm gonna try and do it real lightly this first time. And I'll do it consistent across. This is just a washi tape and it just it pulls right off. Because this is the this is the one with oil paint that I did with Michael Harding paints on this side and then this is the oil pastels we just did and this is a little yellower through there and that could be fixed fixed easy enough. See what you can get by mixing. This is just these three colors. There's some white and a little black. If you could get those colors. So that was a good experiment. I like that. You can do the same thing. I've got some other ones already taped up too. But you can do the same thing with your red, yellow, blue, your magenta, you know. But there you have it. Let me label this before I forget. So these are some swatches that I made using different color theory. This is the red, yellow, blue. Just the traditional is what I started out with, the Newtonian, and what basic colors I got there. You can, of course, stretch it out further and get a lot more different values and mixes. This one was the uh, cyan blue, magenta, and the yellow. And uh, the values are made by added, adding white to it. So these are some of the the colors that we got there. I wish I had lined up the the purples so you could see them a little because that always seems to be one of the 
one of the colors that I do like the green in here. That's a nice rich green. And that was mixing about even colors. And then this one was the Zorn palette, which is used primarily by portrait painters. And if you want to want me to talk more about the Zorn palette, I can do that later. But if you if you want to do this, just do it. Just I, I went and used um, washi. I used washi tape to mark off these squares. I've got a lot of washi I need to use up for one thing. But, and it's, and washi tape, if you're not familiar, the longer you have it, sometimes it starts tearing and things when you do use it, so you, you want to use it up. Anyway, I digress. I, so I taped off all these squares and they're not exact. I mean, you can see like the size of this one compared to that one. But, you know, take a page in your sketchbook and just start mixing the colors together and see what you can get. You have unlimited possibilities. So get in there and play and see what kind of rich colors you can come up with and Consider how you can use it like this. This would be great in like a landscape. And this is the magenta and the yellow. I marked these here. I labeled them with what color it was. And I used I used the, the Sennelier, Sennelier pastels or the Paul Rubens. Uh, one of the two on each one. That's kind of a neat, just these colors. I, I just, you know, there's some just really nice oceany water color, colors of water that is in here. Well, that was a good exercise. I enjoyed that. Thank you for being here with me. I appreciate you. And I will see you next time. Bye guys.